now for round two from the Super Sunday Series. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is... Hello and welcome to coverage of the Super Sunday Series here from Renton, Washington. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with Adam Prozac. Adam, welcome to the booth. Good and to be here. we are underway. Juan Carlos Vargas is going to kick things off with a vaporkin off of an island and a mountain. He's playing up against. I mean, this has got to be awful for Juan, right? Oh, hi, Reed Duke. <laughs> right? Is that One, bad? To I always want to play against the best players. Oh, okay. Uh, you got you improve. You're crazy. No, you improve. Uh, that is true. Playing against. You know, somebody that likes to read. It's not like the other players in this tournament are slouches. Not at all. They won a tournament, uh, and a lot of these players travel mm -hmm. visit often over continents. Mm -hmm. That's true, to go to GPs and do that. Now, it looks like uh, Viper's Kiss took down Vaporkin there for Reduke. Yep. Now, we actually watched redraft this deck, mm -hmm. and he went kind of deep with this. Okay. He's playing multiple reanimation spells in this deck. Wow. He's even running uh, a commune with the gods. Okay. But here's the first thing is Disciple oh, uh, of Phoenix. Yeah. So uh, he shows him a mnemonic wall and a crypsis. Yeah. Now this is kind of interesting, right? Because if <laughs> Reed Duke were to take the crypsis, then it makes a mnemonic wall a so lot better. So Reed's, Reed's just going to take the mnemonic wall. <laughs> yeah. That's why he's number yeah. three. <laughs> All right. Reed passes a turn back. Well, looks like he's got a dragon mantle. Wow. It looks like he's going to upgrade from a 1-1 one, one to a 1-3. Mm -hmm. It's not going to do much else currently. He is going to attack because he's got a magma jet in his hand, Juan does, and he actually wants to use it to get rid of the 1-3. What do you think about that, Adam? Yeah, I mean, the I'm surprised Reed's really blocking as a tempo play, but Reed knows that he has Farika's Mender mm -hmm. to turn his disciple, so he's willing to pay two pumps of the, the Dragon Mantle. Right for just half of the Disciple. The Disciple's going to come back down next turn mm -hmm. and get even more cards out of Juan's hand. Yeah, so that actually works out really well for Reed. Yeah. So... Mm -hmm. uh, Juan's right. going to use Crypsis, give his uh, creature pro creatures. And if pro, is pro his opponent's creatures, and also turn it into a Farika's Mender. Yeah. So pretty nice. Turn, he upgrades it into a 4-3, which is going to trade. And he still has that Magma Jet. I believe that's a Magma Jet in his hand. It looks like one. Unfortunately for him, Reed Duke is sitting on like six cards and five mana. Yeah. And you got to feel like Reed's going to start pulling ahead pretty quickly here. So Commune with the Gods comes on that mm -hmm. reveals the top five. Mm -hmm. He gets a creature <laughs> or an enchantment. That's right. And that's interesting because, I mean, that card's not that great. But if you're playing Reanimator, the other cards actually end up in your graveyard. Mm -hmm. Now Reed uh, sees Reed looks nothing. Like he missed. He bricked off on his commune with I the did gods. not see the second, so there's a sip of Hemlock, okay. three lands, and mm -hmm. a card I did not see. And here's an Asphyxiate. Yep. Destroy target untapped creature. Yep. <laughs> Awkwardly enough, the Crypsis untapped <laughs> the <Juan's> creature. <laughs> 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 so, Magma Jet U. Wow, Magma Jet U. Is he just desperate to try to find something well, from the scry he, here, or what am I missing? I, that's part of it, uh -huh. and uh, he also knows Reeds has a uh, Disciple of uh, Phoenix coming down. There. Okay, so he's just wanting to get that out of his hand, basically. Yep, that makes sense. He's, he's basically resigning himself to play off the top of the deck mm -hmm. to weaken Reed's Disciple. Okay. And given that that was his only... I think Juan has a land I think I would have played. Yeah, that's yeah. an island I definitely would have played that if I were Juan. Yeah, because he's going to just lose it here to the Phoenix. Exactly. And he does. So we'll see. Reed still has quite a few cards. I I like Reed's position quite a bit. But two yeah, headed Cerebus comes down for Juan Carlos Vargas. Oh wow! And is Reed. that a second? Farika's Mender, Mender. <laughs> get back my Farika's Mender. It's like Grave, grave digger, digger you want to fight with. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, 
Labyrinth champion for Juan Carlos Vargas doesn't oh, look too hot Labyrinth here. Champion. Yeah, he's he's got two. Uh, he's facing down two three power creatures, unfortunately, or three toughness creatures. Excuse me. Reed's going to battle with his four three. Juan Carlos is just going to take it, and there's a, a fairly unexciting follow up. But yeah, Felhide Minotaur, sure. My favorite. Felhide Minotaur. That's your guy. That's my dude. I like that creature too. A lot of flavor text. A mm -hmm. lot of value. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Rashad says he's got a story to tell. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I like the Minotaurs in Theros block. You do? I do. They seem to have gotten a little bit of an upgrade here with Born of the Gods as well. There's a few more cares about Minotaurs cards coming in. I'm curious. Wow. So here's a second Disciple of Phoenix, easily for the entire hand there. Right, so is that a... It's a Bolt, bolt of Karanos. Yeah. yeah. And he's also Coordinated got... Coordinated Assault? Coordinated Assault, wow. correct. Yeah. Both very good cards. Yeah, indeed. It's very very rarely you see two cards, and the one that's not the Bolt of Karanos is scary. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. So two very good draw steps. I think Juan was doing well to kind of sandbag it, try and make it really impactful because he has so few cards. Yeah. But I think the second disciple is going to be Go. too much to handle. You can't bolt the Faruka's Mender. Right. If you do that, Reed's just going to play his other Faruka's Mender and get it back, and he's not going to get anywhere. That's right. Uh, so <coughs> the Felhide Minotaur is the... <laughs> the un unfortunate recipient of the bolt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but even then... That's... For such a high impact car, that seems like a relatively low impact target. Yeah. But on the other hand, one can't just sit here and take six damage a turn. No. It doesn't have the uh, creature, so it looks like Reed's in the driver's seat. It sh certainly does. He's got a full grip of cards here. I think he's got five or six cards in his hand. One of them is the Freakus Mentor that we know about. Yeah, this also, Freakus Mentor is essentially unkillable. Wow, he just made five black Nikos. with Nykthos. <laughs> Floating a black mana here, uh, he's going to play Freakus Mentor to get back your business. favorite. Yep. <laughs> so Reed is back. Kind of going off here. I mean, he just played Nykthos for value. Reed, do Reed does have one Grey Merchant of Asphodel in his deck as well, so that obviously would be That's likely the to ender. be the best card, and given the other cards I've seen Reed That's play. right. Yeah, he's playing a Rescue from the Underworld, and he's also playing a uh, Faded Retribution. No, no, not Retribution. Faded Return. Faded, yeah, the block Faded. Right. And, yeah. yeah. And that is uh, seven mana. Mm -hmm. Four black, black, black. black. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, zombify a creature. You get to return yep. a creature from a graveyard from to play. From either graveyard to play. Yep. And it's indestructible. And it's indestructible. And if you do it on your turn, you can scry to. Oh, it does everything. Or you can do it on their turn and ambush them during an attack. It has a ton of upside, uh, no doubt about it. But, you know, you could see being under a lot of pressure and having that card be kind of miserable for you. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and seven mana seven is, a mana. is a huge bomb. Yeah. But, if, but Reed's deck, you can take a look at Reed's... Uh, Resume here. It's quite impressive uh, in a relatively short amount of time. Uh, he he has built this deck to go long. Yeah, this this yeah, deck is a, a long long controlling grindy type build, mm -hmm. and I think he's going to get a lot of value out of that card. So yeah, I've always been impressed by Reed's play. He uh, plays in a ton of tournaments. Mm -hmm. uh, not only does he do the whole Pro Tour Grand Prix. Circuit. Uh, he also plays on the Star City Open circuit he, he often. He does. Yep. Uh, and he's here. Super Sunday so. Series competitor as well. Yeah. And he's his results have definitely shown it. He's uh, one of the best players in the game today. He is indeed. He's currently ranked number three on the top 25 pro rankings, behind two other stellar players. Ben Stark and Josh Utter Layton. Yeah, so I would, I would hope, not bad. I'd hope the rankings show who the actual best players are. Yeah, <laughs> and they they do. It feels like they do. Yeah, yeah. A great job. If I want to know who's who's playing well, you know who's who the who are the best players in the world right now. Right now. Right now. Yeah. You can look at the top twenty-five and get a pretty good, pretty accurate representation of yeah who they are. Get a look at Roberto Gonzalez over there. Uh, the Bowtie Mafia. That's him, yeah. Uh, he's, uh, he's, on the, he's two reads right. <laughs> he is, yep. He, he finished uh, ninth. 
two Pro Tours ago? Six, 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 pro, pro Tour, tour Gay Crash yeah. it was, yeah. <laughs> so, three Pro Tours. Oh, that's ago. why. <clears throat> Just missed top eight there. He's yeah, from is Mexico. New Mexico. Yep. Albuquerque. I, I used right. to PTQ with him often yep. when I lived in Arizona. Uh, <laughs> both of us were crazy enough to make the eight hour drive to each other's PTQs. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you were the ones who were like, oh, yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's how we got to know each other. When you travel to tournaments, you mm -hmm. generally know the. All the other players that also travel to those same tournaments. Yep. And just like, you know, in your local store, you go to your local store often enough, you get to know everybody that goes to your local store. Yep. Same same thing works, you know, on any level of Magic. Yeah. It is interesting that the communities are, it's funny, I, when I first started coming to Magic tournaments here in Seattle, um, you know, when I played against the same person the second time, I remember thinking like, God, what are the chances of that? And then yeah. I just realized, no, I just kind of, you know every you yeah. know you see the same faces mm -hmm. even at a relatively large event you you do i i even find that for grand prix you know mm -hmm. doing coverage at them i'm like oh i know that guy i know that guy you know even if i don't know his name yeah I've, you know, i've seen i recognize the face and see him often enough you, you introduce yourself and right. you know well, a lot of these uh one thing that for me uh when i saw the invite list for this event there, I believe there are 20 different countries. There are 20 different, different countries, countries represented. Yep. 39 and players, 20 different countries. Including multiple people that qualified at a Grand Prix not on their home continent. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, there. Uh, I know, I don't have the list in front of me, but I know like, a couple American Grand Prix uh, Super Sunday series were won by South American players. Okay. That's, I thought that was really cool. And you just like going in the room, you just see... A very diverse cross section of people just yep. from all over the world. It's it's great. So right. we're, we're on our way here. Now, now both players uh mulliganed. Oh so they're both yeah. on six here. And Reed Duke's got a couple of swamps and no answer yet for that for that idol on there. That's the fire breathing. It has fire breathing. I believe so, yeah. Yeah. It grants and has fire breathing. Really, really nice card. Uh cheap, it only costs three mana to bestow. Mm-hmm. And only costs two mana to cast, and looks like Juan Carlos has decided uh, he wants to get a board presence going early here. Now, Reed What's Duke it? does have, he's representing either a Bile Blight or a Farika's Cure. He has a Bile Blight in his deck, no Farika's Cure. I don't know if he has it in his hand. Yeah, if I were Reed, I, I don't know if Reed has it, I can't see his hand, but I would not spend a Bile Blight. Mm. And especially because you have uh, multiple, you know, cheap disposable creatures like Disciple Phoenix mm -hmm. that will effectively trade later. You could take some damage. Mm -hmm. It's only two. Right. And it also, you know, affects Juan Carlos Vargas's uh, mana if, if, development yeah, here, too. If, yeah, if Juan wants to play, he's not progressing the board. Mm -hmm. We know that Juan doesn't really have much in his hand. Right. He has a Dragon Mantle, which is not the best thing to <laughs> put double, on double something fire with. <laughs> Yeah. And Should so reveal two lands here, I believe. Yeah, and you mentioned it, yeah. Adam, right here. There's Disciple of Phoenix, which just effectively blanks that Eidolon now. I mean, it, mm -hmm. Reed is perfectly happy to make that trade. He has multiple. Yeah, you'd ways much to rather give. Back. A, you'd much rather spend your Disciple of Phoenix to trade with uh, one one rather than one of your best cards in Bioblight. That's right. Now this is really interesting. Read Duke. Read it. Read it twice. Read because that, that is a perplexing chimera. Yeah. <laughs> this is one of the weirdest cards. Uh, that has come out of, of a new set in a while. Uh, we spent a lot of time on this one when we were doing our uh, it is perplexing. set review. Yeah, it's... Uh, well, uh, we gets to look, take a look at the rest of one hand and sees an Akron Crusader and a Dragon Mantle, and the Dragon Mantle is going to go away. All right, so Perplexing Chimera, though, is going to stay on Juan Carlos's side. What it says is whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may exchange control of Perplexing Chimera and that spell. Cool. If you do, you may choose new targets for the spell. Otherwise, it's just a 3-3. Three, three. For example, if Reed casts Bioblight, mm -hmm. uh, Juan can give him the perfect perplexing Chimera mm -hmm. to Bioblight both of the... So then Juan controls the Bioblight. Right. He could, for example, uh, take control of the Phoenix. Right. So here's Commune with the Gods, and Juan Carlos is like, yeah, sure. I, that I, I don't want to give you a 3-3 three, three for that. Yeah. 
Oh. All right, so it looks like the archetype here for Reed Duke. It's a 2-3 oh, wow. with death touch. Gives all of his creatures death touch, but it does cost six mana. Yeah, this is uh, this. You only play this card when you really mean it. <laughs> uh, usually six mana to give your creatures a keyword is not all that powerful. No. But when the game wants to go long and you have look at Reed's board of low power, high toughness creatures, uh -huh. Death Touch is the perfect ability. Yeah. Archetype of finality can be quite nice in that scenario, though you got to wonder if Juan Carlos is even going to let him have it if Reed <laughs> does go for it next turn. Wouldn't you rather have the Archetype of Finality than the Perplexing Chimera? Yeah. You know, as an example. Juan Carlos has drawn a couple of not amazing cards here. Vapor can pretty good to start getting the yeah, beat down on, or Chrome Crusader Vapor less so. Right. Chrome Crusader is not where Juan wants to be. You can see as like a blue-red heroic deck. You see a lot of heroic things, a lot of uh, <clears throat> bestow creatures mm -hmm. in Juan's deck, but his draw really hasn't come together. That's right. So, if you could, if one has another, you know, say if he still had his Dragon Mantle, he could, you know, sew up the Vapor Ken mm -hmm. and start. I think Juan has to win this game in the air. Yeah. It's only at 12. Right. You have he to remember the early uh, fire breathing. Right. It's five. Yeah, and and, and it is seemed to be the. Vi I mean, look, if you if if you took the the spells that we see from Juan Carlos Vargas there, and gave them to him in the in the ideal order, he would be in fantastic shape. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right? A if Chrome the, Crusader into Vaporkin into the Eidolon Bestow. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah. you're getting some serious beatdown happening there. But uh, unfortunately for him, it's it's been a little wonky the way that things have uh, panned out. And Reed looks fairly stable here, though. That Vaporkin is potentially an issue. Ah, the sip of Hemlock. So now we're going to see the so Perplexing Chimera activated I here, right? I believe so. I mean, this is huge. Yeah, because not only does he get to kill he might even just kill the chimera mm -hmm. just be like all right you get the chimera i want to target the chimera that's right uh that <laughs> wow he's gonna let it happen yeah i don't know if that's valuable i just feel like the a two one flyer is far more valuable than a three three yeah because the three threes just can get double blocked here pretty handily yeah it, he's not even attacking block, with it anyway yeah Interesting. Also, the two points was potentially very relevant. Okay, so he wants the death touch guy. Okay, so that's what he was waiting for. Okay. But unfortunately uh, for Juan Carlos Vargas, that does leave Reed Duke with a 3-3, three, three, which can block it. So it, he's going to have to use his small creatures, or maybe his, his plan is to try to find some something to target that Akron Crusader and make a bunch of 1-1 one, one death touchers. Well, he found something to target it, but I don't think you want to spend a bolt of Karanos to target <laughs> a one, one, your own creature. Agree. So And also, look, things are really awkward now, because remember, Reed now controls so Perplexing Kite. Yeah, he can just give so, it right back. Yeah, that bolt, you might as well just rip it up, <laughs> mm -hmm. unless, he, unless he really wants the Chimera back. Perplexing Chimera, though, and there's a Flesh Mad Seed for Reed. Very difficult card to figure out how it works and then how to use it best, right? I mean, Absolutely. M most likely this is the first time either player seen it in action. Mm -hmm. I'd be very surprised if... All right. If either player has experience with a rare from a set that was released yesterday. Yesterday, like <laughs> last night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So here is Labyrinth Champion for Juan Carlos Vargas. The question is, does Reed want to have a Labyrinth Champion instead of a Perplexing Chimera? That Chimera is very interesting. Like, it's, it's kind of crazy, right? I mean, because now Reed is like... Well, maybe he'd rather have the champion, maybe he wouldn't, but he has to start thinking ahead to well, what about the cards that Reed Duke can draw mm -hmm. that the Chimera then blanks. When you when you control the Chimera, you have the power, mm -hmm. basically. Exactly. And also, Reed isn't under any actual pressure right mm -hmm. now, so he can just sort of sit here. Yeah, I honestly think that if Juan would have, if we go back to the sip of Hemlock. Yeah, I like that. If, uh, he's just attacking with the Vapor can over and over. Because remember, he would control the sip. He would Reed would take two and drop down to ten, and he would still have his Vapor can to hit him yeah. down to eight, and then put wow, a four to the clock. Okay, Reed wants Prowler's Helm. Prowler's Helm. 
not a typically strong card, but when the game's drawn out, yeah. it becomes one of the most powerful cards. It really interesting because, like you said, that card doesn't see a ton of play, but Reed is instantly like, no, 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 because he wants this game to go as long as possible. Here's Bolt of Karanos. <laughs> Once again, targeting Felhide Minotaur. Yeah. I mean, it's the best creature. That's it how is. Reed's, Reed's definitely built his deck to be like this. He has. He's like, your removal is going to be bad because all of my creatures are value guys. Mm -hmm. They're not. I'm not playing. You know your uh, four three for your minotaurs. Right. You know, borderland. Borderland minotaur. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So Bolt does in fact take down Felhide Minotaur. That's going to tap Flesh Mad Steed. Juan Carlos got a scry one out of it. He kept the card on top. Oh, uh, now we're good. And here we go. Sending in some uh, attackers. That's right. Sends in a 2-3, two, a 2-2, two, two, and go ahead and send in the 1-1 one, one as well, he did. Two makes blockers for Reed Duke. Yeah, He's got a couple because cards. because of the archetype on one side. Mm -hmm. uh, gives all his creatures death touch. So one's actually looking pretty good this game. His draws have been... And I mean, that Labyrinth Champion has death touch. Like, if he can find something to target it, it can just become a little machine gun kind of mowing, mowing down the squad here. So That's what we call a combo. I would actually <laughs> double block the Labyrinth Champion. I think so, too. Or, uh, it looks like Reed has a trick given his blocks. Okay. I can't imagine. Here it is, five mana. Rescue from the underworld. Rescue Rescue. From the underworld. All right, so Felhide Minotaur is going to get rescued by Phoenix and Reed's next upkeep. Yeah. Okay. And he's going to get some value there. Unfortunately, one, well, unfortunately and fortunately, one has no cards in hand. Uh, Reed only looks like he has one, so it may not be no cards in hand, right? all that potent. Nope. So no no discernible no effects. Figure. Yeah. But still, he's he rebuilt his board back up. Mm -hmm. He did fall to 10. I took two damage from the archetype itself. Like Reed has another play. And remember that perplexing Chimera sitting there. <laughs> 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 All right. Do you wanna do you wanna give me this uh Chimera? This is interesting. This is very interesting. Because he can just say, sure. And then the Chimera thing's off the table and, Unless and that's Reed's it. Card in hand. I think he made a small mistake mm -hmm. by um mm -hmm. not I would have equipped the Prowler's Helm to the Flesh Mad Steed. Uh-huh. Because it's going to get tapped now. Right. Yep, he does have a play. So he, tagging with it didn't make a, a lot of sense. Right. He wants to keep his five man up so he can he was grave play dig back Disciple. His plan was to play Farika's man. Right. So here comes Disciple of Phoenix back to Reed Duke's hand. And one, man, one three for four mana. It just happens to be the creature that Reed Duke has in his graveyard. Right. It's he really one. just wants the four three. That's right. And interestingly, the the Disciple of Phoenix does put a little bit of pressure on Juan Carlos because if he's got something that he'd like to keep in his no. hand, he can't. Oh, he found something. What is it? I can't I see what it is. I don't know what that card is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It might be the looting enchantment. Can you oh, not man, bring I, that up for the, the rummaging enchantment? <laughs> it's not a card I've seen him play yet. Oh, it's Thunderous Might. Oh, So Thunderous Might is uh, plus plus two, plus one, and first strike until end of turn, I think, right? Oh, okay, the the instant. Yeah. I don't know why oh, it's sitting it? there. Oh, when though. it attacks. Oh, no, Thunderous Might is, is the one it? where it gets plus X plus yeah. zero, where it X is its uh, power, right? Mm. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Whenever Enchanted Creature attacks, it gets plus X plus zero on a turn where X is your devotion to red. Yes. So okay. it'll... That's actually But really it just killed the Farika's Mender thanks to the activated ability there. Oh wow, he's gonna actually open it up here to, to death. Alright, he says sure. Yeah, that I take a two for one. That's a reasonable trade. Not too given. bad. <clears throat> it's a scary but reasonable trade, right? I yeah. mean we know that Reed Duke has many ways he can dig those creatures back, but he did have he's top decking essentially. Mm-hmm. I'm it looks like both players are mm -hmm. in top deck mode. Yeah, I mean, Reed has one card in his hand that we don't know that he, he drew this yeah, turn. Yeah, just drew. Yeah. Wow, that's an Akron Conscriptor, isn't it? Yeah. That card is scary. Yeah. 
He's got to get it through, but I believe that Juan will have the opportunity to just send all of his creatures in. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the Conscriptor, if it gets targeted, can steal Flesh Mad Steed, create... And, and the worst part of... Or maybe the best part about Conscriptor is that you can target it with instant speed effects and steal things during combat, which is kind of insane. He does get to untap with it, which is already pretty nice for him. Reed Duke up a game here. Juan Carlos Vargas just passes the turn back. Two cards in hand for Reed. Maybe three. Three cards in hand for Reed. And Reed's going to attack. He says, yeah, sure. Flesh Man Steed, get in there. Bring it to 16. And that is a Viper's Kiss to take down the Eidolon. And he's going to follow up with a currently not activatable Return Phalanx. It might not, is it activatable in Reed's deck? Not that I know of. I, I, we didn't see anything that got fixing. He's not running a Unicorn. He doesn't have any uh, Nylea's presence. So I don't think he can turn that on. I don't think he has a guild. Yeah, that's a that's an interesting choice for. I mean, it's a very powerful blocker. It's basically, yes. reads like I want a three three defender for two mana. That's right. Doesn't want to lose to a, a a super early ordeal start or something mm -hmm. like that. It does help read. You know, reads plan. Uh, we've talked about. He wants to prolong the game. Mm hmm. Interestingly, if Juan Carlos can target his Conscriptor, he can steal it and activate it so it can attack, <laughs> too. I think that's uh, part of the thing. You can also, you also have the option of targeting his um, his rare... Mm -hmm. uh, the Labyrinth Champion? The Labyrinth Champion. And just, and just killing something. Yeah. Yeah, so it kind of depends on what the board state looks like mm -hmm. when that happens. Pretty crucial for Reed Duke to keep one card in his hand here, I would think. I mean, representing some type of removal spell is going to make that a Crone Conscriptor play probably too risky for Juan Carlos, even if it would win him the game. Mm -hmm. All right, Reed is plugging away with the Flesh Mad Steed, so horse fight here drops Juan Carlos down to uh, 14, and so. Sip of Hemlock... Okay, moving things forward is going to take down Labyrinth Champion, so that option is off the table now. Looks like, is, does Juan have an Anger of the Gods? I think cards? he's got Anger of the Gods in his hand. Wow. There are some great cards in this draft. I was watching. No kidding. Look at the top tables. I mean, I saw a Cure, I saw an Elspeth, I saw a Brumaz. Really? Yeah, there's. Oh, man. That's awesome. These decks are tame by comparison, but I mean, Anger of the Gods, it. Would, is no joke. Double Farika's Mender, Rescue from the Underworld is no joke. Indeed. All right, both are going to attack now from Reed Duke. He's perfectly happy to trade off that Flesh Man Steed for the Akron Conscriptor if uh, Juan Carlos wanted to. This is a definitely an aggressive attack by by Reed. Yep. He's basically counting on uh, Juan not having the ability to uses a Akron Conscriptor and the Marshmus tight. Now that's a big one wow. here for Reed because that's not going to die. Uh, to an yeah, anger of the gods. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and and if Juan Carlos wants to, I mean, I, now it could, right? Because Juan Carlos Vargas could attack with his conscriptors, try to trick Reed Duke into blocking with his Titan, and then wipe the entire board. But that seems like a risky play uh, if you're in Juan Carlos Vargas' seat here. Looks like he's found something sweet. Six mana? Oh, it's a spear point Oriad. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. Wow. So he's going to steal the Marshmus Titan here. Wow, so this That's is actually a huge swing. It is not quite lethal. Uh, uh, so there's also a blocker, but... Yeah, it's, it's it nine damage. Representing nine damage. Yeah. Um, and no good blocks for Reed Duke. Now, the question right. is, is Reed, can Reed crack back for a significant amount? Four, five, six, seven. Not really, so... Oh, he's... Wow. Born of also the, casting Anger of the Anger Gods. Anger of the Gods right so now. So that'll sweep up Reed's creatures... Notably exiling them. Indeed. So no Farika's Mender shenanigans. Right, although there's already a Farika's Mender in the yard. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think if, if Reed draws Reed has second other one, shenanigans, shenanigans yeah. will be afoot. Yeah. All right. But so Reed drops to one. He drops to one. Facing a very scary lethal five four first striker. Correct. Of course any targeting on this Akron Conscriptor should end the game as mm -hmm. well. Reed's gonna suit up, and he just has to say go. So oh, he's uh, in chump lock mode here. Unless it, yeah, Reed will need a spell. Like, you can see this is a, the long, long game. Both players have quite a few lands in play. Mm -hmm. Magma uh, jet you. Magma jet you. Reed 
packs them in, and we're off to game three. Would you attack first? I'd consider oh. it. Mm -hmm. Maybe oh. just make him show you a removal spell mm -hmm. or something like that. See if Reed has had a trick. You know, you can get some. No depends on what kind of player you know want to. Some players like to play off their opponents, no like mm -hmm. just try and get some tells, mm -hmm. things like that. And other p players just want to play tight technical magic. Yeah. All right. Well I was definitely one of the latter. I just wanted to play a clean game of magic. Mm -hmm. I want to spend all my energy figuring out what the right magic play is. All right. As opposed to getting any information. It looks Reed? like it looks like uh, Juan Carlos is uh, of a similar vein. He just okay. says, "Oh, this wins me the game. I'll do that." Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but there's definitely something to be said for uh, the attack. If we chump blocks, is he just, you know, he's has all all nothing in his hand, mm -hmm. and then you can magma jet him. You can magma jet him, or you, you can definitely even wait. whatever. Because I, mean, I know players that would just sit there forever and just be like, "I'm going to see every card I can out of your deck because no matter what you do, I'm just going to magma jet you in response to something," you know. The danger of that is mm -hmm. there are definitely cards that can gain you life at instant speed. Ah, uh, yeah. And things like that. Like, you open up yourself up to a whole... Freak is cure. Yeah. 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 Just things like... Yeah, things like, like that, that like can Reed be goes, very disastrous. Reed plays, uh, like, Grey Merchant, and you're like, okay, I'll Magma Jet you now, and then he Freak is cure something. Exactly. And you're like, no! And, all, yeah. and you had the win at any point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Agreed. The question just becomes, is that information more valuable than the risk that you're taking on. Mm -hmm. And I think generally it's probably not. Giving away a for sure win is <laughs> about the biggest downside possible. And it looks <laughs> yeah. Juan Carlos is like, yeah, we're just ending this thing. So a little bit of sideboarding. And uh, I like the matchup. This is a really cool matchup. Uh, Reed mm -hmm. Duke, uh, red, uh, green, black control. Uh, an archetype that I love drafting in, in Theros block, and hopefully I'm hoping, and it looks like it'll still be alive after Born of the Gods is here as uh, well. In my opinion, uh, it's even stronger. Oh, uh, basically give me a hug. Yeah. <laughs> love hearing that. Uh, in general, uh, if there's something, if there's a thing to do in mono, uh, triple Theros, mm -hmm. uh, Born of the Gods will make that Sorry. strategy stronger. Oh, that's cool. I, you know, that's the vibe that we got, too, right? Is it, it feels like it's sort of building off of what we had in Theros. Absolutely. As opposed so, to, like, a big format shakeup where you're like, it's a whole new world. Yeah, we have, there are definitely each each oh, color pair in Theros uh -huh. has an identity to it. Uh -huh. And, for example, you know, red-white mm -hmm. is a heroic theme that mm -hmm. plays lots of small creatures. Mm -hmm. uh, Green-black is a graveyard-based theme. Mm -hmm. And these themes are all present uh, in Born of the Gods as well. Okay. And since Born of the Gods is a smaller set, each individual card has more impact. Mm -hmm. So okay. you actually get more, you're more likely to get cards for your archetype. I see. Uh, when Get like those high impact Minotaurs cards. is the red-black. Yeah. Black theme. And so you're going to, if you draft Minotaurs with Born of the Gods and Theros, you're going to get more Minotaur stuff, then you will and just triple Theros. I like it. So return Phalanx. Yeah, return Phalanx here for Reed. A nice little start for him. And a Prowler's Helm for Juan Carlos. So, so not an aggressive start, but he's looking perhaps to go a little bit longer in the game. I actually think that uh, Juan is trying to, likely to try and sand back his Anger of the Gods. Ah, I see. Uh, but plays a Crackling Triton instead. Cool. So he wants to get some pressure out there, I think, kind of make Reed Duke do something, and he can try to get value from Anger. Yeah, I'm not sure I even like... I don't, I'm not sure I like the play from either side. Like the, the return phalanx was taking care of the Crackling Triton. Mm-hmm. But... All right. And there's... The ill-tempered Cyclops is definitely far more scary. Oh, he's mad. Yeah, he's, uh, he's got a temper. He's real angry. One thing that Reed Hopefully Duke... Hopefully we could see an eye gouge. Yeah, that would be sweet. All right, well, just going to run out the, uh, gray the Gray Merchant. So three life uh, for Reed Duke and uh, three life loss for Juan Carlos. This is probably the most important card in, in Reed's deck. Yeah. It, it, it was the card two that... Two Freakas Menders, yes. uh, return, uh, Rescue from the Underworld. And uh, uh, Faded Return. A faded Return. <laughs> so, so, yes. Okay, that's Agreed. probably not the first time we'll see that Gray Merchant trigger that's right. this game. That's right. And Gray Merchant is absolutely the best... Uh, card you can recur over and over. Right, right. totally. You saw in the first game we got disciple of Fal uh, yeah, disciple of uh, Phoenix, Phoenix, uh -huh. and he was able to you know strip one's cards, but like it didn't actually 
get him there by itself. Mm -hmm. All right, so the Reed's artisan of forms comes down from Juan and telling a not equipped. The Prowler's Helm was not equipped. Yeah, what's what is that? Is that a that magma jet possibility? Magma here? jet, Crypsis. Uh huh, Crypsis. Uh, there's also Lightning Strike as an option. Here's Read the Bones for Reed. I don't know what you read off of bones. Uh, you, you shake them up and then they make a pattern. And then you're supposed mm. to get, like, you know, some type of futuristic. Yeah, I don't know about you, but my thoughts. my bones don't have any words. No, mine, mine either. But Reed Duke, Reed Duke is, he does see things. Yeah, he's, he, he's <laughs> looking at things. He's looking into the future right now, in fact. He's uh, scrying. By scrying for two. And he's deciding what his future looks like. He's really trying to make sure that he crafts this perfectly. I mean, he's he's on five mana. He, he likes them both. He likes them both. So uh, one of the things we did in uh, development, not me personally, but it was on. Originally, the read the bones was scry one, draw one, scry one, draw one. Oh, interesting. But that's all Th pretty fidgety. That's a lot of words, yeah. That's a, Well, not just a lot of words, but a lot of, like, if you actually mechanically go through oh, that I process, see. Uh -huh. it's not as fun as just strike, scry two, then draw two. Okay. So those are the type of things we, you know, when you say we try to make the cards fun, mm -hmm. that is a perfect example I see. of Read the Bones, I think, is much more, you know, much more enjoyable to play. Right. Because of that change. Because of that change. Cool. So Dragon Mantle comes down on the Artisan of Forms. Got to be scared if you're on Juan Carlos' seat here. Reed Duke just played Read the Bones and didn't play a land for that turn. <laughs> so he's, well, yeah, his he hand is all gas. Mm -hmm. Oh, an off-color off -color scry land. Okay. And Prowler's Helm is going to get on Artisan of Forms, and he's going to get in there for three damage. Mm -hmm. or maybe it was only two. This three, he f uh, did one fire breathing. Okay. Uh, Bioblight takes care of the ill-tempered Cyclops. I think Reed was really hoping that uh, Juan Carlos would go for the big, the big play. <laughs> oh, of copy my yes. ill-tempered Cyclops. No, of just monstrousing it, you know, playing this mm. land a couple turns and go and and. Monster scene, but Reed's like, no, 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 we're just gonna uh, get this thing off the table right take now. Take a look. Wow, Wand's hand is very strong too. Uh, Anger of the Gods, Magma Jet, uh, Spear Point Orion, yeah. and Coordinated Assault. Yeah, so really nice grip here for Juan Carlos Vargas. Uh, if you're Reed Duke, well, what are we taking here? <laughs> That's pretty difficult. You know, the yeah. Magma Jet's not terribly effective. Uh, no. given Reed's board. I think it actually depends a lot on what Reed has in hand. Of course. Even the anger doesn't, you know, do a ton. It clears out the the Disciple and the Return Phalanx. Uh-huh. Um, it might just be the Oread. Yeah, the Oread uh, is... One's a little light on creatures. Uh-huh. Also, you know, one is one mana away from paying for Bestow with Spearpoint Oread and, and yeah. making a, you know, a threat. I mean, that's, you know, that that's Artisan of Forms big game. becomes something. He's going to take Magma Jet, so uh, we'll see what that means uh, in a few turns after we know a little bit more about Reed's hand. He's going to get in there with Grey Merchant for two, and he's going to follow up with, wow, a Marsh Mist Titan that, that he paid two, what did mana? He, two mana for that. Two mana, four, five? Take it. I'll take that. I'll, I'll play a time of Griffin Limited. <laughs> that is sweet. Interestingly, not a, not Reed is going to... No, it's not yet. That's tomorrow. Oh. Yeah, the top maybe, eight is Maybe Modern Reed Masters. will uh, play two mana four fives in every format. <laughs> I don't know what Reed's standard deck is. Oh, wow. <laughs> Flame Wreath Phoenix off the top? Oh. Wow. All right. So so, so now Reed one is demanding tribute. That's right. Uh, Reed can either choose to make uh, the Phoenix a 3-3 three, three haste. Yep. That if it dies, it goes back to one hand. Yep. Or we could just make it a 5-5 five, five Phoenix. Or 5-5 right. five, five Flyer. For four. <laughs> Pretty insane. I'll pay any I'll pay any amount of mana that I have for a 5-5 five, five Flyer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All of the mana. <laughs> yeah. So Reed, this is a, another decision that's going to depend. He's not going to pay tribute. Interestingly, if, if uh, Juan Carlos can find a land and hit that Artisan of Forms, he can make it into a Phoenix as well. It's not as impressive because it's just a 3-3 three, three flyer. That's right. 
And it won't I, have that ability, right? I believe so. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, it has the coordinated that's, assault. Yeah. That's one way to, you know, one could attack for three. I mean, it's just eight damage this turn if you wanted to use the coordinated assault. I mean, is Reed Duke, like, is he going to try to race here? Like, what are his options? I, I think that's your option if you decide to make the Phoenix mm -hmm. uh, three. Uh, Keep it as a three-three. Mm -hmm. uh, you're you're generally in, in a racing mood. Okay. Of course, Reed Duke could have sip of hemlock in his hand, something along those well, lines. If, here. if Reed had sip of hemlock, he would have made it a five-five. I mean, do you think he's more worried about the the artisan of forms here? Both I, are both are things he needs to consider, right? Mm -hmm. And both both creatures are concerning for him. Yeah, that's absolutely an option for uh, Reed to just to make it a 3-3. Three, three. Race, race the 3-3. Three, three. Right. They're both in there. So here it is. Three, right, four, no five, blocks. six damage. Yeah, no, no blocks possible. So Reed Duke drops down to 12. And let's see what he has for this turn. This is a big turning point for the match here. Both players have won a game. They're also both 1-0 and in the tournament. And this is, remember, nine rounds of Swiss. Every match is huge here. There's not a lot of wiggle room for mistakes and for losses. So Reed's really got to figure out now he has, uh, he has actually perfect information about Juan Carlos Vargas' hand as well. He knows all three cards mm -hmm. that his opponent holds. He so Reed's- Spare point or yeah, mm -hmm. coordinated assault, anger of the gods. That's, That's right. Cards. So Reed is going to be able to craft a plan. I mean, a perfect plan here. Uh, the, the, mm -hmm. the question is, does he have the tools that he needs to make it happen? Yeah, another thing to make uh, the Phoenix a 3-3, three -three, mm -hmm. it, uh, Weakens Juan's Anger of the Gods. Right, good if point. If it was a 5-5, five five, I, yeah, I just saw that as I saw Juan's hand. Good point. Oh, and wow. here comes the race. That is a, a Cavern Lampad, and he's going to swing in there for nine damage here and say, look, you have to kill me. I'm going to drop you to six, and I'm going to be killing you next turn with this, uh, with this Marsh Titan. Yeah, I'm trying to see if Juan has... Can he come up with the six? Ability to right now, neither of his creatures can be blocked. He should have it, right? With coordinated assault. Three in the air, that's four. And then the artisan forms is already two power, plus he can pump it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not even close to enough, is it? No, no. That's only four, five, six, seven, eight. That's not only that's only eight. So no, he's not there. One thing you can do. Yeah, what are his other options? Spear point Oriad? Yeah, yeah. Make it into a Marsh Titan. That's four, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and he doesn't have enough mana to play the other. He could get up to 11 potentially, but he doesn't have the mana to do it. Right, so it looks like he's going to have to block the Marshmiss Titan. But he can't, right? He, he can. Oh, he can make his Artisan Forms black? Yes. Okay. So what's the play there then if that's his plan? Is it, is it Spear Point Oriad turn it into a Marshmiss Titan? I believe it's a Grey Merchant right now. I think it's a Grey Merchant. It's something with two power, so yeah. it's got to be Grey Merchant. So he doesn't have to do anything. Okay. So one possible play would be to uh, Spear Point Oriad up the Phoenix. Uh-huh. Attacks for five this turn and five next turn. That's ten. Uh-huh. The Coordinated Assault's only going to give you one extra. At that rate, right. So right here's an interesting one. Hardcast the Oriad. I like this play. Because this allows him to use coordinated assault as well mm -hmm. to not only kill something on the ground with the Oriad, but also still transform the artisan <coughs> of forms into the Marshmist Titan, which is just a bigger you know, card. Yeah, so and it's Marshmist would be a six reads Marshmist Titan as a six seven. Yes. This one Juan's would be a four, five, six. It would have six power if he pumps it once. So he's going to have to double so. block. Yeah. But double blocking with the Oriad. But he can't block, right? The oh, right. The Oriad on it. So, but it's not a chump block, right? Six power. I believe it would be a chump uh, block. It would be a chump block. Yeah, see, without the Oriad on the Arsene of Forms, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think Juan needed to put the Oriad on the Artisan. Yeah, because Reed's lining up his attacks here. There's blood in the water, and he, he has to be careful that he doesn't die to the crack back here. 
you know, Juan Carlos could be giving himself some extra outs to some burn spells here as well. All right, he's going to attack with everybody. Coordinated assault on those two creatures. Trigger here, turning into a Marsh Mist Titan. This all makes sense. Block. And he can take out the Disciple of Phoenix if he wants to kill it. He yep. takes an extra t point of damage there. But he does it for one, but that doesn't do it, I right? don't think that's It's a 6-5. Six six. It's 6 no, power. Six, seven. Yeah, we'll yeah it's not enough. That is not enough. So you take two this dies and this dies? Yeah, I think uh, uh, I think Juan Carlos yeah, missed it. Yeah, I think yeah. he's he's. Uh, Reed says so. You take two. This dies and this dies and Juan's like yeah. Yep. So, unfortunately for for Juan Carlos Vargas there, that line didn't get him where he needed to be because yeah, he has one power short of first striking down the Marshmallow Titan. Yeah, so close. One mana would have done it as well because he could have. Uh, if if he draws, up. he drew an uh, Juan drew an island first turn. Mm -hmm. If he draws a mountain instead, yeah, he's there. So close. And things are not looking good for Juan Carlos Vargas now. He still has Anger of the Gods in his hand, but it's just not doing enough. That's not. That's a perplexing Chimera. That's not going to do it. No. Uh, looks like Reed's going to take this one down because he has a Marshmish Titan with Intimidate. Yeah. So, and Juan is out of black creatures. He is. And that's just too much power here as Juan Carlos Vargas is sitting at a lowly four life facing down a lethal attacker. So it looks like Reed Duke is going to improve to 2-0 and and get off to the perfect start here after two rounds, looking to a 3-0 the pod, and that's it. Juan yep, Carlos Vargas extends his hand, and Reed finds the victory. Mm -hmm. I think he's just saying if he bestows, mm -hmm. then it's big enough. Then it's big enough, to, to bounce at least. No, first strike.